In this tutorial, we'll be going over how you can delete the background from an image using Affinity Designer. And to show you what I mean here, I have this example image with these hikers climbing up these rocks. I was able to delete the background from this image so that I was left with this result right here. And in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to do the same. So the first thing you'll want to do is open up your image in a new document. So come up to where it says File and go to Open and locate your image on your hard drive to open it. Once you have your image opened in a new document, you'll want to unlock the layer that it's located on so that we can make transformations to it. If you come over here to your layers menu, you'll see this little lock icon next to the uh, image's layer. If you click on that lock icon, that'll unlock the layer. And now what you'll want to do is right click the layer and go down to where it says rasterize. That will, that will allow us to make further edits to this image. So once you've done that, we need to navigate over to the pixel persona. So come up here to the top left of the screen where it says pixel persona, click on that. That'll take us into a pixel-based environment with pixel-based tools that we can use to delete the background from this image. Once you've done that, we're, the tool we are looking for is the flood select tool, which is located over here, or you could press the letter W on your keyboard. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this tool to make a selection around the background so that we can delete it. So to do that, I'm going to bring my cursor over the background and I'm just going to click and drag to the right to start creating a selection represented by those marching ants or that marquee there. Now, if you're while holding the click, if you bring your cursor to the right, it'll increase the threshold of the selection. But if you bring it to the left, it'll decrease the threshold. So use those movements to determine where your selection should be. For my image here, I'm going to bring it to the right about that much. And if you notice, it did a pretty good job detecting the edges of my subject here. Maybe a little too much. Maybe I should bring that back down a little bit. Okay, that looks a lot better there. Now, it did a good job selecting the edges of my subject, but it didn't get the rest of the background. But that's okay, though, because what we could do now is we can come up here to where it says Refine, click on that. and. In the refine menu, we have these two options over here. We have foreground and we have background. Foreground represents the selection that we just created or the negative space here. And background represents the red area, which is the area outside of the selection. So I wanna add to my foreground here. So I'm gonna have the foreground button selected and I'm gonna use my brush. They're gonna give you this brush to work with represented by the cursor. You can use the left and right bracket keys to increase and decrease the size of the brush. I'm gonna make my brush about that big or maybe a little smaller. And I'm just gonna erase out these areas of the background that I don't want to be here with the eraser, just like that. There we go, and now that's gone. And I'm gonna do the same thing down here. I'm gonna get rid of these, these areas down here. Get rid of this area down here. And I'll probably get rid of these areas down here as well. Okay, so one, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through the rest of this image. If you notice here, the negative space area in the subject here didn't get uh, added to the foreground. So I wanna add that to the foreground here. To do that, I'm just gonna decrease the size of my brush and I'm gonna paint a very rudimentary selection going in here. To show you what I mean, I'm just gonna click and drag like this. If you notice, I'm not going anywhere near the edges of the subject here. I'm just creating a very rudimentary selection like that. And if you let go, it uses its own internal algorithm to determine where the edges of the subject are. And then you could just go and refine it further like that. Like if you see any red discoloration in there, you wanna get rid of that. There we go. Same thing over here, get rid of this area. Make the brush smaller and get rid of those fine areas if you have to. And there you go. I'm gonna come through here and do the same thing. I'm gonna get rid of this area right here. Looking good. Get rid of this area in here. Looking good. And as I mentioned earlier, just increase and decrease the size of your brush as needed to make those changes as you go along. And if you make a mistake along the way, like I just did right there, if you could see, I caught some of the subject's arm there. If you make a mistake, you can undo it by just pressing Control Z or Command Z if you're on a Mac. Okay, so I've gone through and, and deleted out all of the negative space areas. The next step would be to select the background selection so that we can now go through and repaint some of the areas we may have unintentionally clipped off. So with the background tab enabled, you can just go ahead and add red color back to those areas that you didn't want to exclude like that. So I'm just gonna go through here and touch up these areas real quick. And once you have finished creating your selection, you can click the apply button over here. 
and now the marching ants will be updated. And with the updated marching ants, all you have to do now to delete your background is press the delete key on your keyboard, or you can come up to where it says edit and go to cut. All right, I just used the delete key, so it deleted the background, there you go. And now you can get rid of the marching ants by going to select and deselect. And now we have, we have finished deleting the background from the image. Now, if you want to save the image in a usable format, come up to where it says file, go to export, and make sure you choose PNG from this list here. If you choose something like JPEG, you're not gonna get a, you're not gonna get a transparent background. You're gonna get a white background by default because JPEG doesn't support transparency. So export your work as a PNG image, as you can see here. And once you've done that, just click the export button and it'll ask you where on your hard drive it, you would like to save it. And that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can delete the background from an image using Affinity Designer. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.